What's up, you beautiful person, and welcome back to the Realistically Free YouTube channel, where we talk tips, perspective, and I give you some advice so that you can live freely in reality. And um, today's topic is going to be a little bit rough for me. It is the journey to having children as a trans man. Um, also, uh, how there's different processes so that you're able to um, have children, okay? And um, them be biologically related to you. Um, I see this question a lot, and unfortunately, there it's a, it's a very tough subject um, to kind of go through. But um, my wife and I were on the process. We were started going through the journey of um, trying to have children. I try to give as much information as I can in this video without it being super long, so that if you are a transgendered man with a cisgendered female and you're looking for information on how you can biologically have children without you uh, personally having to carry, then hopefully I'll be able to break this down in, in a very um, real uh, real way and give you the best information that I received um, over the course of us trying to have, um, have ch children. So um, I'm going to talk first about like the financial and and the process, the financial pro, the financial cost, and the process uh, medically that you, that you would potentially have to go through to try to do this. Um, I'm going to talk about the the steps that you can take so that you can biologically have a child, and I'm going to talk about the the steps that we personally um, started taking to try to have a child. Um, so, if you are not willing to carry or you're not physically able to carry the child, um, you would basically have to go through what's called IVF. Um, so you would have to stop taking testosterone injections um, and then you would have to start these different, uh, a kind of, your doc, the doctor or the specialist that you're working with will prescribe you um, some different medications that you will inject. And what this medication will do is essentially um, get you ovulating and get you um, producing um, a lot more eggs than you normally would uh, so that they can harvest as at least eight to ten eggs um, so that they can store it and then um, go from there, right? So um, what you would do there, and the reason why they do that is so that one, you would have multiple chances of trying to have children if for some reason one or two of your eggs just doesn't work. You, you know, if they can harvest eight to 10 eggs, then you have multiple chances to have children. Um, if, um, or so that you can have multiple uh, children. So, um, and they'll essentially store that or they, you know, they freeze them, you know, I don't know what the correct term is. I wanna say they freeze them um, and then they'll store them and, and so on and so forth, right? Um, and then what they'll do is they'll start to run a bunch of tests on your, your, your partner. Um, in, our, in our case, um, I didn't choose this route, and I'm going to explain why in a little bit here. Um, but what they do is they'll start to run a bunch of tests on your partner, um, see when she's ovulating, you know, make sure that she's physically, you know, in good health to be able to have children and carry the child to term, and 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 all of those different things is what they'll do. They'll just run a bunch of tests um, and make sure that everything is gravy with her ovaries and reproductive system, so that you know when they do take the egg and you know, and the sperm and do all that they do with that together and then implant them. Your, your partner will essentially be a surrogate um, for your child. Your, your partner wouldn't have a, a biological relation um, to the child, but she would, you know, the baby would be growing, you know, in her and, and she would birth the child. So there would still be a bond there, which I think is beautiful, but um, it's a lot. Okay, so that's, that's the point there. Um, so in the U.S., it's very expensive here in Pennsylvania when we were looking through the cost for if I would have decided to go um, to go that route it was eight thousand roughly eight thousand to twelve thousand dollars and that's just if they wanted to if you wanted to have take your eggs out you know freeze them that's not counting that's not including storage fees for them to store it um, and and all that good and fun so it was eight thousand to twelve thousand dollars that's not including the medications that you would have to take, um, which is also about, it's roughly like $2,000 up front. Um, and you would have to inject yourself with all different types of hormones and, 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 
and all of that so that, you know, basically everything that I just explained. Um, and in typically insurances do not cover either one of those things. So you'd have to either finance it through like care credit or see if they have a program that you can, you can finance that cost, um, but, or come up with the cost upfront in order to do this. Um, I personally, um, when I didn't care too much about having a biological child. I mean, the, the, my dad who raised me was not biologically my father. Um, and I didn't look at him any differently. He's, I still, to this day, even though he's since passed on as my father, my dad, he, he, he instilled a lot of his, um, a lot of his morals and, and, and behaviors and beliefs into me. Um, he's the one that, um, you know, really helped me grow, even though I was very young when he passed. Even now, when I think back, um, back to him, all the things that he instilled in me. So I didn't personally feel like I needed to have uh, a biological relationship to this potential child in order to feel like a father. Um, the way that I look, the way that I look at it is that you know, I love my wife very much. She is my soulmate. I say I'm so grateful to have her in my life. She's a she's an amazing, beautiful woman in my eyes, and and you know, to know that we were going to be walking this journey together, for me was the most rewarding thing. Um, to know that to see her excitement, um, to go to all those doctor's appointments with her, um, to be going through the whole process of having the child, even though it wasn't in a traditional um, way, to me I felt that. It was enough for me to feel bonded to my wife and feel bonded to the child because I knew I'm going to be there for that kid no matter what, right? So that's that's where I stand on that. Um, we didn't go that route with IVF. I was not about to um, take a bunch of more different hormones and stop one hormone and then you'd have to, you know, you have to do everything within like a week period or something like that. And, and it's so expensive. We couldn't afford it even if we wanted to. Um, so it, that was out of the question. So the, the route that we chose to go was, um, you know, artificial insemination, which basically you still would go to a, a clinic and I mean, you don't have to go to a clinic. You can go to a sperm bank. Um, but we chose to go through the clinic because we wanted, I wanted more information on what was going to happen, what the process was going to be. And, you know, we were concerned about some things that my wife was experiencing medically. So we wanted to make sure that if we were going to put out this money to, to purchase sperm and to do all of this, that we were going to have the highest chances of being able to get pregnant. So um, that, that's, that's really it. Um, we winded up going that route and we winded up stopping the process. Uh, we, we, you know, she went through a lot of different medical testing and things like that. And... Um, it just came down to I was about to have surgery. Uh, we were living in an RV at the time, and we were trying to find an apartment so that we, you know, could save money and potentially buy a house. And it just seemed like it wasn't the right time. Um, it, it, and it just wasn't the right time. There was a lot of um, stressors and life things, and I felt like I didn't want to bring, um, I didn't want to bring a child into this world not knowing where I was going to put them or you know, how I was going to make sure that her, you know, my, my wife and my future child have everything that they needed. So that's kind of the medical um, part of it as far as if you want to have children. The mental part of it is a lot harder emotionally. Um, there were times where, you know, while as we were going through certain things in there, I don't want to get too much in this video because to be quite honest, it is a little bit rough for me um, to talk about. Um, but, you know, with going through all of these appointments and trying to to find the right donor and trying to save the money to get the don the the donor sperm and all of those things you know it was mentally stressful there were times where my wife um you know she would say things like you know it's all on her you know and she's the one that's got to do everything and you know emotionally and mentally it was it was hard because you know, in my eyes, it was like, we wouldn't be going through all this if I was just normal. I felt like it was my fault. I mean, it is my fault. Um, you know, I felt like, damn, like if I would have just been a normal average Joe, you know, a cisgendered man, then we wouldn't even have to be doing all of this and spending all of this money and taking this time out to do all of these appointments. Here we are, um, 
wanting to be parents and it's just like nothing was really going our way. Um, and it just seemed like, you know, it, it seemed like it. I, I, I don't want to speak too much on, for my wife because, you know, from her perspective, obviously it's going to be different. And maybe I'll try to talk to her again and see if I, I can get more information from her side of it um, so that I can make a video about it if it's something that she, you guys want to see or that she's comfortable sharing. Um, but emotionally, it is a lot. Mentally, it's a lot um, to try and uh, find the right doctors, find the right donors, have the open communication, take time off of work, go here, go there. Um, and it was a lot. And I felt a little bit selfish in a way because um, although I was willing to go to all these appointments and do all of these things um, and sp you know spend the money that I was spending, um, I wasn't willing to do certain things like do have her be a surrogate type thing. Um, I, I wasn't willing to do all of that. That's not something I wanted um, uh, for my own personal reasons. Uh, uh, some I already mentioned in this video, but um, you know, I think that uh, it, it is, like I said, it's difficult. It's a difficult process. Um, it's a kind of a scary process, but it can also be a rewarding process. You know, when you have a child, I would assume I've spoken to other people who have said that it's the, the end goal once they have that that baby in their hand it's like everything was worth it um we unfortunately didn't get get to that get that far but um you know maybe in another couple years or, or maybe sometime soon I don't I don't know I, I don't know what the future holds I'm partially glad that it didn't and things happened the way that it did because then COVID and you know, my wife being out of work, and it was just a lot of craziness now that um, I'm kind of glad we didn't bring that child into the world. So maybe everything happens for a reason. Who knows? Um, but uh, yeah, that's it for this video. That's how if you want to have a child as a trans man and you want to be able to have it biologically related to you, those are the steps you take. Find a uh, fertility clinic, get some test testing done, find financial aid. They'll, they'll assign like a case in most places where we went to. They assigned a case uh, manager to us who was able to um, help us out and and give us information and try to help us financially um, with with that so um, that's that's really it um, and I would definitely recommend if that's something you want to do is to maybe talk to a th uh, counselor or a therapist as well because there could be a lot there's a lot of emotional um, and mental stuff going on with that when you're trying to uh, when you're going through the infertility process or you're trying to have a child and there there can be a lot of you know disagreements and misunderstandings and and hurt feelings and things of that nature so I still re I would definitely recommend talking to someone when you're ready to embark on that on that journey the both of you guys so that you can understand each other in a more deeper level um, so yeah that that's it for this video uh, hopefully I was able to give you some great inf um, information and and Hopefully this wasn't super depressing. Um, so that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And um, I got more content on the way. And uh, that's it for this video.